I used as a bad filming spot. Oh wait, it's just reflecting off the table. So welcome to another vlog. As promised in the last one, I'm gonna be working on that and hopefully finishing that bunny tulip art in this vlog. But first, I gotta tell you what I did today because I thought I would just work on the bunny art all day. And then this morning I get a text from my mom saying that she was going to some market that's just 15 minutes south of Calgary. She was like, oh, you should join because she's going with some of her friends. And so she messaged me when she was 30 minutes from this city. <laughs> so I just hop out of bed and shower and get ready. And I made it there on time. But I've got some vlog footage. We went to Saskatoon Farms which is not lo located anywhere near Saskatoon. We're not by Saskatoon, but they grow Saskatoon berries, which is why they're called that. And it's such a cute place. So they have this spring market going on right now. So they had a whole bunch of vendor booths and stuff. I don't think I even got a shot of the one vendor booth area that was in a parking lot, but they had some indoor booths as well. Plus they just have their own shops that I think are open year round. And it's just like a fun little place to walk around and there's a greenhouse and you can get food there. And so many of the vendors are also selling food and giving food samples. And there's even a Mexican restaurant there, which we ate at. It had a very long wait, so we just put in our reservation and kind of shopped around. And there's so many kitty cats wandering around. There was a little torty, a little Mickey Mew, and there was a Kiki and some other kitties. And it was just kind of great, like fun impromptu adventure. And it's so close, so that's nice because I'd like to go back there for other seasonal markets, like for, I mean, I'm assuming there's a summer market. I know there's a fall market and it'd also just be fun. It's a fun place to take guests, I guess, if it lines up with an event that they're doing. So yeah, I'm gonna do a haul of, of what I bought. So we have Billy Joe's barbecue sauce. Billy Joe right there was working the booth. <laughs> so Billy J supported Billy Joe <laughs> and it's so good. Uh, I tried a sample of it and had to get some. There were so many good things at the vendors. Like there were more food stuff I almost bought and didn't. I got this chia seed and mint salad dressing. Like I said, it could also be diluted with water or soda water just to drink. And he said it's good in mojitos. Again, I tried a little sample of it. So good. I would love to make this salad right here, minus the olives, but just like a nice yummy something. I don't know. I got this little mushroom. It just, I don't know. <laughs> just so cute and we do have the mushroom theme kind of going on in here and it's something that's not orange or green so just you know i can't go too crazy with the orange and green so it's just a nice decor thing that fits in but is a different color small knickknacks probably the last thing i need but i don't know it was calling to me okay and then there were also these fake tulips they're so soft and so cute and you know i'm working on that tulip artwork right now i was just like yes tulips the same booth that had this salad dressing had this pistachio spice cookie. It looked really good. And then there's this. So I thought this would be cute up here. I don't know which wall I would put it on. I'm kind of torn, but I could frame it. So it's got oranges and greens that do match the decor I have going on in here, but also a little bit of yellow because I do have touches of yellow around here. So that'll help add a bit more of that yellow. So cute. Then I got a couple jewelry items. I got this one here, which reminds me of a daisy. And the chain is interesting too. That's by Dazzle by Perry. Perry, Perry. And I also got these earrings. They're pine cones. Look how cute. <laughs> so those are my jewelry finds. And then there are a couple more things. A few, in fact. We have this, I don't know hummus, uh, queso. Jalapeno queso, and it happens to be vegan. It is so good. Again, I tried a sample, delish. So I had to get that. And then I had to get some of the Saskatoon ice cream from the Saskatoon farm, obviously. So probably gonna try some of that tonight. And this Meadow Creek maple breakfast sausage. It's the little chubby sausages. <gasps> so I really wanna go back there someday when they have more markets. I gotta keep an eye on their events. Okay, so it's the next morning. I am going to be dyeing my hair today. My nails are in desperate need of a repaint because they're grown out so much and they're starting to chip off and stuff and I'm scared my nail's gonna break. But I've actually repainted some of my nails because I just wanted it to last longer because the thumbs and index fingers are the most prone to damage. 
So if you look at like this ring finger, that's a true indicator of how old this gel is. So I want to dye my hair a couple days before I repaint my nails because when you shower, there's color that comes out of your hair every time you wash it. And it obviously is getting on your hands when you're showering. And I don't want my nails to stain too much, so I'd rather get in a couple hair washes before I paint my nails. <laughs> That's why I'm doing this today, so I can repaint my nails in a couple days. So I have some different henna this time. I forgot to bring up the packaging, but it's burgundy henna from the henna guys before I use henna color lab, but they don't have a burgundy. And I was using wine red before, but I'm trying to make it a little more pinkish. It might still look weird because I still have lightened ends. So like this whole section might still look weird. We'll see. But it's still just way too orangey for my liking and probably will stay orangey till it's cut off. But maybe the burgundy will help. I was reading the instructions for this just in case it's different from the other henna I used. And it's wildly different. And it's not because it's a different color. This is this brand's instructions like it lists a whole bunch of colors on the instructions. And so I guess this is just the way this brand does it. But this brand wants me to apply to dry hair, but the old one wanted me to apply to damp hair. This one also says to let the henna sit for eight to 10 hours after you add water to activate the pigment. And the other one was just the use right away kind of thing. So I'm like, does it really need to activate? I don't know. I'm probably gonna let it sit for at least a few hours though. So I was planning on dyeing my hair first thing today. Like I was gonna go shower and then dye my hair, but I'm still gonna shower right away, but um, we'll dye later in the day. I used to do this downstairs. I would bring a jug of hot water down. And I'm like, you know what? Just do it at the kitchen sink. I usually go in with my hands to squish it, but I'm not wearing gloves yet because I'm not applying it yet. So I'll just mush it to the best of my ability. The next, I'm gonna clean the floors actually. I'm gonna vacuum and mop. Then I will shower. <laughs> and then I'm gonna work on my artwork. That's the plan for today. Doesn't that look appetizing? <laughs> I think I need to get a wooden utensil specifically for stirring this because the brush is a little flimsy and you can't use metal and I don't want to use one of my <laughs> kitchen wooden spoons because it's going to stain it. Should pick something up at the dollar store. Okay. Oh, I was like, why does it feel so dark? Maybe because the curtains are closed. Behold. So yeah, I'm gonna continue working on this. I'll maybe put in a couple hours and then go dye my hair because I want the hair dye to sit in my hair for a few hours. So let's go. So this voiceover segment's not gonna discuss the art. There's gonna be a second art segment later and then I'll give my thoughts about this piece. But for now, I wanna talk about something else. So I briefly mentioned in a previous vlog that I was looking into doing embroidery and I was testing out sweater blanks and I've got thread samples and I've been doing so much research and just going through everything and I have officially decided to move forward with it. So I have not ordered a machine yet, but I do want to soon. I feel like one is not going to be enough but at the same time starting with two seems so scary so i'm like what if i get one and then like when i'm all in two months later i can get a second one but <laughs> just, part of me is like you're gonna want two off the bat but i just i'm, I'm kind of too nervous to start off with that because with one machine i'm very limited as to how much i can produce in a single day like not many sweaters at all it ultimately depends on the design and number of stitches but like if it takes an hour to do a big design then if I'm running this thing for eight hours a day, that's only eight sweaters, you know? <laughs> like, 
So I don't know. Maybe that just means I don't do very much off the start, but I figure let's keep it simple. But uh, what I have moved forward with is getting the software because I figured why not try out the software before I get the machine. Although I found out there's no, like for the software I want, there's no trial available in the USA and Canada. Like you can get the 30 day trial in other countries, but not here. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. So um, I want to go with Wilcom. I've been researching the heck out of different programs. And ultimately it's what I want to go with. It's kind of like the big one, like popular, the big guy that a lot of places use, I guess, and has a lot of great features. And so I'm just going to go with it. But then I, I found out the price tag is 4,000 US dollars, 4,000 US dollars just for the software. And I was like, oh boy, am I going to go forward with this? And so I contact a sales rep about it. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm interested in this software. And they're like, okay, cool. Uh, you know, let me know if you want any add-ons. We're also doing half off the software if you trade in your old embroidery software and I'm like oh my god like (laughs) I'm thinking to myself hmm what if I bought a cheap software and traded it in to save myself two thousand (laughs) dollars but I was just like oh I don't have one to trade in and I wanted a couple of their add-ons and what they did they gave me one of the add-ons free the other one half off and then for the software itself they gave me half off and I didn't trade anything in. And I was just like, woo. And they were saying that this was a deal they're doing this month. I don't know if that's something they frequently do or what, because it's not advertised anywhere on their site that they're doing a sale. So I'm like, hmm, they just have a sale going like 50% of the time or like, what's the deal here? I don't know. <laughs> but sweet, I guess. And I was going to maybe wait till next month because I'm not buying the machine yet, right? until next month and so I was gonna wait but I'm glad I didn't because if the sale was truly only for this month then I made it just in time so I'm super excited and I thought I would get to play around with the software this week but they're snail mailing me a copy of it like (laughs) it's being physically mailed to me they don't just give me a key that I can enter to activate the software I'm assuming it's gonna be like a disc that they're sending and so I mean, maybe it also just comes with a key you can type in, but it seems so old school. I'm like, oh my God, I literally have to wait for this to arrive. So I won't have that for another week. So, you know, also with this embroidery journey, a big thing was getting Christian on board because there's no way I can just be running this machine all day, every day myself. Uh, So I need help with that. And so I asked Christian if it was something he'd be willing to do, and he said yes. And so I got myself an embroidery employee. (laughs) Yeah, I'm just excited. There's so much more I need to buy. I've got like this mega list. I've got spreadsheets. I've got it's a lot. But you know what? I'm just I'm going to do it. It's one of those things where I feel like I'm going to regret not trying it. If I give up someday and decide to just outsource, then... I can sell the machine and in terms of financial investment, it's a smaller investment than my shopping bags were. A lot less for a single machine (laughs) and the software and all the other supplies. So, you know, it's not that scary, although (laughs) it does make me a little nervous that I have not yet made back the money I've spent on the bags. And so, you know, it's like, okay, now you're going to make another big investment. Hmm. (laughs) But... (laughs) The thing that made me most nervous was the labor part of it. Is that part worth it? Because I think financially it's worth it. But is it worth it in terms of the labor? And hopefully with Christian's help, it'll be doable. So I'm moving forward. Okay, everything that has been drawn so far is colored. Uh, There's more to do because the idea was to have some faded flowers behind it. I don't want any white areas up against the bunny. But I'm just terrified of ruining it. I've scanned it, so there is that version that is saved, but I kind of want to keep going, especially because the bow and outfit are so light that I don't want to leave the background white, even though I kind of do like the way it looks now, but um, I think we got to keep going. And in this, I made it blue. I I don't think I want it blue, but that is a way to keep the background light. I suppose I could just keep going with green because I feel like there does need to be more greenery between what I have so far. It's just like sparse leaves. It needs more. So 
maybe I could just stick with green instead of blue and keep it light don't go dark at least not too too dark <laughs> maybe the areas right around the bunny could be a little darker and then it gets lighter around the edges and then for these I just did blobs of color behind I can maybe use some light marker colors if I have the right colors also a thing to note about the bunny's face oh my god I'm just kind of realizing this is a little unblended see this is the thing about me scanning it already is I know I'm gonna make tweaks to it but the thing about the bunny's face is I went a little lighter on the fur detailing because I was doing a lot of it on the ears and then I thought what if we go a little bit lighter on the face the edges have more of the fur texture and then the middle it's softer look at this when I'm zoomed in on this I'm loving it so much. I kind of want this to be my new profile picture, <laughs> but I shouldn't be changing my profile picture all the time because it's like my branding, right? Even though I've kind of been wanting a hand-drawn traditional art profile picture instead of digital. Um, like I've changed my name online multiple times. I've been Zed Kitty Zed, I've been Bailey Creations, I've been Bailey J. I'm swapping out my profile picture all the time. It's horrible for branding, but I do it anyway. And I've just been feeling like my profile picture needs a little more juge. And now I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait, this could work. Like, look how cute that is. It's colorful, it's got a bunny, it's traditional. This might be the solution. Oh my God, like look, look, ah. I want to scream. I know I'm tooting my own horn here, but it's also making me see some light patches in the fur. I'm like, oh, here, here. I should probably fix that. Then I'm going to scan it again. Ah! Some of that lightness could be uneven Copic layer. I don't know. Okay, rescan. Anyway, I'm going to see if Christian is hungry at all. He just got back from work a little while ago. And so we have one HelloFresh sitting in the fridge and kind of want to make it. So I'll see if he's getting hungry. And then maybe after I cook, I'll put in the hair dye. <laughs> also, I put on some eyeliner. I got a new eyeliner pencil because I've been using liquid liner only. Most days I don't wear eyeliner at all, but I just kind of wanted to test this. It's a little tricky to apply. But that's why I'm wearing eyeliner and nothing else right now. <laughs> Chicken sandwiches with coleslaw and potato wedges. Okay. It is time. It's probably been like five hours or close to five hours since I added water to this. Here's the packaging, by the way. So that's, you know, obviously pinker than the wine red I was doing before. But because I've got such an orange base, we'll see <laughs> how pink this actually gets. Chocolate pudding. It's kind of stinky. It's like an earthy smell, but not like good dirt smell. It's kind of stinky dirt smell. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make it so you can see the bowl at my head, but I don't think that's going to be possible. The shower curtain's a little Thanos-y. Oh, static! Turning this camera off is going to be hard. Like once it's on, it's kind of going to stay on. Because my hands are going to be filthy. Now the hardest part with henna is it's like it's kind of gritty and it dries as you're applying it. And so it gets kind of hard to work with. Like your hair feels like it's tangling and matting. And then it gets hard to get down to your roots. So I'm trying to get as close to the roots as possible first. Work my way down, yeah. Not too different than how I would do my overtone dye, honestly. Oh, the overtone was a conditioner, so everything was just so smooth. I need some gloves that go to the elbow because my hair will touch my forearms. Oh my god, my face is so itchy. Christian? Yeah. What? Are you already mid dye? Yeah. Shoot, I was gonna show you something quickly. What? Uh, there is very loud like flamenco music playing outside right now. Flamenco music? <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite fall guy I'm out. Well, it's called fall menko. I mean, I can come over. I've got like one piece died. Is there an event going on or something? Or is it the neighbors? BRB. Gotta investigate the neighborhood. I'm the neighborhood creep. 
<laughs> From upstairs, I couldn't tell. It's almost out like I was going to throw across the pond. I mean, it could be because it could just be like bouncing off the house, off their house, so it sounds like it's coming from their house. Who knows? Is it the neighbors? Is it not Joey Jack? No. I don't see them outside. I can kind of see their deck from the uh, window. Huh. I will say, this is the smoothest I've ever gotten my henna mixture. <laughs> Usually it's a little more gritty. But yeah, I guess I'll continue <laughs> with this. I've already gotten one drip on the floor. I do have plastic down. But I'm trying hard not to step in it. I think I can use one of my knuckles to turn the camera off. It's semi-clean still. I'll check in with you when my head's covered. <laughs> this eyeliner is not holding up. But dies in. I'll let that sit for three hours so I can go back to some art. Make sure there's no henna on my hands. I might do one last hand wash. Even though I think it's fine, it's hard to know because it stains. But <laughs> let's do one final hand wash. Look at my neck. <laughs> and I tried to wipe it down too. That's what it looks like post wipe down. So now for my thoughts on this bunny artwork. I freaking love it as you already know. Uh, the background, I don't think ruined it, thankfully. I think the faded flowers were the right choice. The one part that I'm a little iffy about is the contrast of the bunny against everything else. Because initially I thought, oh, I want the background kind of dark because the outfit is light. But the fur color is one of the darker things in this piece. And so in terms of value contrast, there might not be enough. But luckily I can tweak stuff in Photoshop if I need to. So it's not entirely the end of the world. Like for example, when I first started doing the bunny fur, I started going in real hard with the darkest fur color underneath the bow. And I think that ended up being too much shadow. And I did go back in and try to lighten that as best as I could. But it gets to a certain point where there's only so much you can do. So that again might be something I just tweak in Photoshop to lighten up the shadow a little bit so it's less harsh or maybe it just doesn't come down as far, I don't know. So I do have the option to tweak things. Like I could technically isolate the bunny from the background and either make the background a little lighter around the bunny, make it a little darker around the bunny, whatever. I can play around with it and make it how I want because you know, it just, it definitely needed something because the, the leaves are so dark compared to everything else that it looks so funny with just the white background, but clean and crisp at the same time. But it was just like, oh, here's some individual random leaves. It just, <laughs> it was a little too sparse looking. So I did go in with my markers. I had to refill some of them. So I spent a little while on that. You know how I got those Copic refills recently? A lot of those were for my lightest colors. So first I had to figure out like what ones I was going with, what matched the other, like the tulip colors the best. So I did shade them a little bit with pencil too. I wasn't sure at one point if I would do that, but it was kind of silly as flat color. So I added just subtle shading at the base of each light marker tulip. And I think that helped a lot. And I just kept working it from there, just looking at it being like, hmm, what needs more? I kind of step away from the artwork. What areas need a little more shadow? And this is the final result. So I'm really glad I added the background. I just don't know if I need to tweak a few things to help with value contrast. Oh, and adding in the whiskers last minute, which I almost forgot. I filmed my finishing shots and I was like, wait, the whiskers. So <laughs> there is the finished bunny. Part of me wonders if I should just draw my bunnies without whiskers. That would make my life a lot easier. But this one has the whiskers and I love it. So pastel, so cute, so bun bun. I probably will do more finishing shots and do photos for social media in the morning because kind of got diminishing light. It's just a little dingy in here. So in the morning, I will get all the good shots and pictures and stuff. And I am pretty much done for the night, I guess. It's currently 7.30. I do need to leave my dye in longer. But I might just go chill upstairs with Christian. It's now the next morning and I thought I would do the hair reveal. 
before I get all sweaty with step mania. So there it is. It usually looks redder in my vlogs than it actually is. But uh, it doesn't look burgundy at all. But I can tell it still looks different from when I would use the wine red. And usually when I first dye it with the wine red, it's like a vibrant red. <laughs> and I don't have that this time, which I actually like. Because ultimately I want just a warm brown that's a little more on the pinky side than the orangey side. And I feel like we're slowly getting there. I feel like the ends are still going to fade orangey because they were previously lightened. And I could just kind of sense it, you know. It's, it's a little orangey still. But... I don't know. Um, I feel like it's not that much different than the wine red. It's just not as bright. It doesn't feel burgundy at all though. Like maybe once more of my roots grow out, it'll have that sheen to it, you know, when the light hits it. Come on roots, come on hair, grow faster, grow faster. But there it is. Get right in front of the window. Whoa. That is it for this vlog. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Wait, is there not another one? <gasps> Are you kidding me? These are the only two bees like this and they're different sizes. So the two shoes are not gonna be identical, but I guess it's okay. Oh my God, I don't know why the butterfly was so hard. Maybe just the shape, maybe it had a different backing. I don't know, but the, the next three went in very easily. <laughs>